All right, so our next speaker is Garrett Reppenhagen, an Iraq War veteran and executive director of Veterans for Peace. Hey, y'all. So, uh, you know, I'm sure there's plenty of people that uh, have a... Uh, why don't... Hey, you can hear me now? Yeah, there's probably uh, some amazing speakers that uh, I don't want to repeat a lot of what they said, but look, you know, I, I joined the U.S. Army one month before September 11th, and, uh, you know, I was, I was indoctrinated into the military for a long time. You know, I, my father's a Vietnam vet, retired Army. Uh, both my grandfather served in World War II. Um, you know, military service was a tradition in my family. But that's not why I joined. I joined because uh, I joined because there was an economic impact. I was working four minimum wage jobs, uh, struggling to make rent. I was a, a high school dropout after my dad passed away from Agent Orange-related cancer, and uh, you know I was I was looking for an opportunity, and that's what the military is for a lot of people right now. But you know, more than an opportunity, there's this nationalistic uh, uh, support of the U.S. military. There's there's a blind uh, unwillingness to think critically about our government, to hold it accountable, and to make sure that they're sending troops into harm's way only after all diplomatic solutions are exhausted. And how we got that way is is through this this nationalistic ideal. You know, this this thing that the blue angels are flying over right now is this is this blind support. They're using taxpayer money to sell back to the public that war is good, right? And you know, it's. It's that blind uh, un unwillingness to be analytical and criticize our own leadership that gets us into this situation. And then that, that same nationalism makes it impossible to leave. If you walk through the halls of Congress, every single office has a POW MIA flag out front. And that is because they are, they are not supportive uh, just, just altruistically of, of service members and lost service members, but they're, they'd be ashamed not to do it because of the, Everybody else is judging them for not having it, you know? Like folks coming to this uh, Blue Angel show uh, this weekend, you know, is, is basically uh, just enraptured in the same nationalistic identity. And, and you know, the, the intersectional issues between climate, racism, and war couldn't be felt more. If you, if you look at the, uh, you know, the events of January 6th, uh, at, the, at the U.S. Capitol, that was spurred by nationalism. You know, this, this idea uh, around this uh, white supremic uh, identity uh, that is, you know, it's spurred on by this defensiveness of, uh, uh, you know, white reclamation. And it's, it's, it's drilled down. If you look deep down, it's still connected to this nationalism. It's all connected, to just like this Blue Angel show. The amount of fuel that's wasted just today to sell war back to us um, is making it more likely that there's going to be more war, more likely that we're going to send troops in harm's way, and it perpetuates this positive feedback loop that we're caught into, you know? So, you know, I just want to thank all the organizers, uh, you know, Lisa, Peace Action, VFP, all the other organizations involved to have the courage to step out here. Because at one point it, it had to have taken some courage. Uh, to, to stand in front of all these vehicles that are coming to the show, this place where everybody wants to go, you know, uh, you know, support the troops because they're, you know, they don't want to be ashamed not to, you know, or, you know, they want to see the coolest, latest, you know, fighter jet or whatever it is that's spurning them. It takes courage to stand out here and speak truth to power. It always does, you know, and it's, it's these little sacrifices that we make that encourage everybody every day to take one more step forward. You know, I know there's a lot of people in this community that have gone out to Bath Ironworks and have been arrested and have protests there, you know, that takes an incredible amount of courage. But we, may, we have to make sure we're not doing this in vain. We have to build critical mass. And that's why it's important just to come out on a, on a Saturday morning and join us here on this corner. I'm new to Maine, and I'm going to be out here as, as often as I can whenever, whenever Lisa gives me the call, whenever Doug Rawlings gives me the call, whenever Bruce gives me the call. I'm going to I'm going to bend over backwards to try to be here because one more person makes a difference every single time. You know, I, I didn't know how many people were going to be here today. I'm so impressed uh, by the folks that have showed up um, and your willingness to, to stand, stand here and, and face these folks and, and, and speak the truth. Because if, if more people did this, 
uh, before I, I joined, before I went to Iraq as a sniper, before I went to Kosovo, I would probably have never been on that route. You, you could have stopped me from doing that. So we need one more person every single time. So next time, invite a friend, make sure they come, give them a ride. Uh, and, and when you come out here, do it safely. Because another intersectional issue right now is, is this health crisis that, that we're, we're facing. So that's another risk you took coming out here. But we can do it safely, we can show up safely, we can do it right, and I think, uh, you know, I appreciate everybody for doing that. And, uh, you know, keep, keep at it, and I'll, I'll be here. I, I, I'll make that promise to you. Thanks, everyone.